Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from Romans chapter 11, the first part of the epistle lesson, verses 33 through 36, where St. Paul writes, O oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given to him that he should be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Wow, what a week. On Monday, we saw with the rest of the country, we at least partially, but some of the country saw a full eclipse, something that doesn't happen just every day. As a matter of fact, there are many people that drove thousands of miles and flew miles to get to that 70 mile wide band just to watch the sun go behind the moon. And then at the end of the week, we had Hurricane Harvey hit, and he is still hitting. What a week, you might say. As a matter of fact, there were people last Monday who were asked by reporters how they would describe the eclipse. And people would be also asked maybe the same question when it comes to this hurricane. How in one word would you describe this event? When it comes to the eclipse, it was interesting what people said. Some said, awesome. Some said, amazing. Some said, magnificent. Still others, spiritual. Spiritual? Really? Maybe emotional, but spiritual? Something that lasted maybe a few hours? Now, I don't know if you could call Hurricane Harvey spiritual, but oftentimes people use events like this and think they are spiritual. Oh, how often we try to undermine our God. We think we know, that we know his ways, that we know what he's coming from or where he's going. We think we know the mind of the Lord, and we fool ourselves. We could easily ask the question, why, Lord? Why did you let this happen? Why this great catastrophe? Why? Why do we ask? For St. Paul reminds us, who knows the mind of the Lord? Because the mind of the Lord is not a momentary mind. He is eternal. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. He knows. He knows our weaknesses. He knows us. He knows us individually. He knows us personally. He knows us in a caring, loving way. And yes, we also many times ask in times of tragedy, why these things happen. And we try to guess the mind of the Lord. And we are reminded that no one knows the mind of the Lord. The British author by the name of Arthur Clarke once put it this way when it comes to knowledge. He said that for a man who is young, education is important. And when a man gets older, education is still important. That just the education is young, but it's for the old is like. Because he says this, when a man is 20, he knows a lot of things. But when he is 40, half the things he knows are no longer true. And when he was 20, half the things he knows when he comes 40 haven't even been, haven't been even uh, established yet. The mind of human beings is hard to understand. So how in the world can we even question and how in the world can we even understand the mind of our God? And then there's wisdom. Because it comes right along with knowledge. Because wisdom is the ability to use your knowledge for the best possible situation. And we still undermine God and we try to question his wisdom. But maybe we should question our own wisdom. Things we have taught, things that we believe, oftentimes we don't put into practice. For instance, I'd like to share you a quote this morning. The quote is this. 
I think it's fairly obvious why I was married. As strange as it may sound, I am a very moral woman. I was taught by my parents that if you fall in love, if you want to have a love affair, you get married. I guess I'm very old fashioned. Can anybody tell me who, who said that quote? Anybody want to guess? Well, here's your answer. It was Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> After seven marriages and five divorces. Wisdom. We can poke fun at Elizabeth Taylor, can't we? But we ought to also look at our own lives. How wise are we truly? The knowledge that we know, how often do we put that into practice in a good, proper way for the best outcome? Oftentimes, our wisdom isn't that great. So how are we possibly able to question God's wisdom? Because it's not just a whim of wisdom. His wisdom is eternal. And his wisdom has us in his best interest. Even though sometimes I may not seem rational, even though sometimes I may not seem with great reason, but he has our best interest in his heart. He is our God who cares for us and loves us. And the reason we know this, most importantly, is because we don't just have a God who sits from a distance and hears all of our pleas and all of our cries and all of our distresses. No, we have a God who interacts with us, who sends his son Jesus to live our life, to go through the motions of life, and not just the motions of life, but doing everything that a human being possibly can do and does do without sin. For he took our place and went to the cross to die for us upon that cross that we may have everlasting life. And it's because of Jesus and Jesus alone that God truly loves us. It's nothing that we deserve. No, it is not a reward. The riches that we have is not a reward. It is complete grace, undeserved love that God has for us in Jesus Christ. For God truly loves us and cares for us in times of tragedy, in times of calamity, in all times, in all seasons, in all places. We know who our God is. Our Father who loves us, who cares for us, who has all knowledge, all wisdom, and gives us all riches through his grace alone. May God continue to bless you as we go out throughout this week. Wet though it may be, we go throughout this week reminded that our God will protect us and love us and care for us because our lives are in his hands, the almighty powerful hands who has given his hands upon that cross, who died and suffered for us, that we have everlasting life.